You may know Thailand as a country full of nature and happy people, but did you know it plans to become one of the world leaders in gene-edited agriculture? Just this July, Thailand's Minister of Agriculture and Cooperative signed groundbreaking legislation that's supposed to achieve that. Now, let's look at some more concrete facts. According to the Thai National Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology, Biotech for short, and also the European Union, there there is a difference between genome edited crops called the GEDs and genetically modified ones, your normal GMOs. At first glance, it sounds like somebody is trying to be clever with the words here. Obviously, you tamper with the genetic code in both cases, but the difference is that the GEDs can go straight to the market without any risk assessment from the respective authorities because they are for some reason considered to be identical to normal plants that you find in nature. Unlike the GMOs, which you still have to run through the FDA for a safety assessment. And exactly this sounds like a worrying loophole, if you ask me. But Biotech also provided three categories of GMOs, which further explain this issue. Apparently, when you just delete a part of an already existing genome, it falls into the SDN1 category, which isn't yet considered to be GMO, only GED. But if you change or add any gene sequence, it may already be considered a GMO, and you'll have a much harder time bringing it to the market. Now, even though I am recently growing to be more against GMOs, just because I don't want to consume something when I don't know what exactly is inside of it, I could agree that if you delete a certain gene from a plant, for example, it could still be considered a natural plant. Reason being, there is this thing called epigenetics, which is why some genes get activated and some don't. And even though two plants might have the exact same genetical information, they may look drastically different because of their environment. Even the food you eat is considered to be a part of your environment. Which is why when honeybee larvae are fed honey, they become normal bees. But when you feed them royal jelly, they grow into queen. So it can occur that a natural plant will have a certain gene muted, and when you take another plant and cut the same gene out of it, you'll get the exact same result. And it should be safe. But when we are talking about food products for people, I believe that any meddling with the genetical code should be viewed as risky. And there should be a thorough risk assessment of every single such product, indifferently of what GMO category it falls into. You know, sometimes it's better to be safe than sorry. Anyway, the Thais really hope that this plan and legislation, which I would assume will likely open doors to agrochemical and agrobiotechnology companies to work on more genetical engineering stuff in Thailand, will bring substantial amounts of cash to the economy and full security to the country. I've even read bold statements that this plan should triple the Thai farmer's revenue in the next four years. And if that's true, then sign me up. Thailand is also looking to become one of the world's leading seed hubs and catch up to the likes of India and USA as a result of these genetic engineering efforts. But it seems that it might be a hard sell for these citizens, at least certain groups. Because up until now, there were very strict rules in terms of selling GMOs to consumers countrywide. So it will definitely be interesting to see how this all plays out. And I don't really want to dig into the politics any deeper, because this channel is supposed to just educate about agriculture. So let me know what you think about this pro-gen engineering move, and how you think starting such an industry in a country could play out. Thanks for watching.